Hi. Today I am going to tell you the real cause behind all the chronic metabolic diseases like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, heart disease and cancer. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Healthy Drive. This is a journey about your health. So join me on this journey to understand and deal with chronic metabolic diseases and the chronic lifestyle diseases as they are called. Last time I told you the crucial importance of poor nutrition on the development of this chronic lifestyle diseases. So let us have a look at the kind of food that we eat. Basically they can be divided into two macronutrients and micronutrients. The macronutrients being the protein, fat and carbohydrate and the micronutrients being the vitamins and the minerals. We are going to focus on the macronutrients because it is a fact that if you take your macros properly, the micronutrients will take care of themselves. Now among the macronutrients, the proteins are the building blocks of our body. Proteins consist of amino acids. Not only proteins are present in the muscle but they form a part and parcel of each and every cell of the human body. Now these amino acids, quite a few of them are known as essential amino acids. Why are they called essential? Because the body cannot manufacture them on their own and it has to be taken from the food that we eat. Similarly, fat consists of fatty acids and are stored as energy they are the source of energy which is stored in the body so there uh, just like essential amino acids there are essential fatty acids and once again fatty acids form are present in each and every cell of our human body our brain is 80 percent fat for example but we will go into that later so as i was telling you there are essential amino acids there are essential fatty acids but there are no essential carbohydrates. I will repeat that for you. There are no essential carbohydrates. The lower limit of carbohydrate which is compatible with human life is apparently zero. This has been demonstrated in traditional populations like the Maasai and the Inuits and it has also been documented in medical literature. Now you must be wondering or you must, the question which comes to our mind is, doesn't the brain need glucose with the carbohydrates break down into glucose as you know? Doesn't the other cells in the body need glucose as a fuel? The answer is yes. But the question is how much? Bodies are uh, to, for, to maintain a blood glucose level of around 90 to 100 Deciliter, uh, milligrams per deciliter all you need is uh, 4.5 to 5 grams of glucose and that is a just a teaspoonful and even that amount can be manufactured by the liver in by a process known as gluconeogenesis neo means new and genesis means to make so the fact is the body can make whatever little sugar it needs for its utilization as a fuel. There is no need to take carbohydrates from an outside source. So keep that thought in mind as uh, we have a look at what each of this food does to our blood glucose levels. So if you have a look at this picture, you will see that the blood sugar shoots up in response to carbohydrates. They're on the left of the, the uh, left of the curve, on the left curve as you see and uh, proteins have a lesser effect but look at the fat it hardly has any effect on the blood sugar what also goes up with blood sugar is a hormone insulin which is secreted in response to the food that we eat and which is shown in dotted lines in the picture so what happens is uh, the insulin levels also shoot up along with the food maximum with carbohydrates and uh, somewhat less with proteins and fat do not have much effect on the serum insulin levels. Now, as I said, despite of the fact that carbohydrates are a non-essential nutrient, 80% or more of our diet comprises of carbohydrates. 
सो लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट वॉट हैपन्स वैन यू ईट अ कार्बोहाइड्रेट हैवी मील फॉर एग्जाम्पल ब्रेकफास्ट वैन यू ईट सैंडविचेज और कॉर्नफ्लेक्स और ऑरेंज जूस और पराठास चपाटीज इडलीज ऑल दिस आर वेरी वेरी हाई इन कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स एंड इट जस्ट शूट्स अप द ब्लड शुगर इन द मॉर्निंग वैन यू हैव दिस एज अ ब्रेकफास्ट द मोर रिफाइन द कार्बोहाइड्रेट इज द मोर द ब्लड शुगर शूट्स अप दैट रिजल्ट इन सिक्रिशन ऑफ इंसुलिन बाय द पैनक्रियस एंड द ब्लड शुगर comes down because the insulin takes away the sugar from the blood and pushes it into the cell so it may even crash down to below normal and you will feel hungry again in the mid morning so if you have had breakfast before 7 at uh, and then you feel hungry by 9:30 10 time again and then you keep on eating eat something and then then you have a uh, lunch later on so this results in eating small small meals throughout the day and that is what the um, doctors and the nutritionists also tell you that eat small small meals throughout the day so what happens when you do that is the insulin levels never get a chance to settle down to the baseline and as long as insulin levels are high as you see in the graph it remains high throughout the day it not only prevents fat from being broken down and used as a fuel it promotes fat storage and what also happens more ominous than that this chronic hyperinsulinemia results in something known as insulin resistance so whenever you eat something beyond your carbohydrate tolerance limit which varies from person to person because each person responds to carbohydrate in a different way so one person may easily tolerate carbohydrates more of carbohydrates while the other person cannot so this this results in something known as insulin resistance which i told you which is nothing but more of it is required to achieve the same effect just like you develop antibiotic resistance more and more antibiotic is re- required to achieve the same effect when you are exposed to the hormone insulin in the blood more and more insulin is required to achieve the same blood sugar level so we develop something known as insulin resistance and this becomes a a vicious cycle now this was never meant to happen insulin is a precious hormone and secreted by a very small organ in the body and that too from a group of small cells in that organ which are known as islet of langa hans so this chronic hyperinsulinemia along with excess body fat and along with inflammation because the state of chronic inflammation chronic hyperinsulinemia is also a state of inflammation so this forms a unholy trinity and this is what gives rise to high blood pressure high blood sugar and uh, other metabolic conditions which are shown in yellow over the, in the picture and then later on it becomes established diseases like obesity like diabetes like heart disease like strokes and cancer so uh, this is what is being revealed by more and more research and scientists are saying that there is a unifying theory of chronic diseases that means for all these chronic diseases the one underlying cause is hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance So, but what happens is when uh, we go to a doctor whenever patients uh, 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 the mainstream medicine sees all these diseases as separate and ent- separate entities if you look at have a look at this picture all the metabolic diseases have uh, been shown over here and uh, by the time you finish your checkup from different specialists because this is an era of specialists so each specialist will give you two three medicines and you will end up with dozens of medications but uh, as i said it doesn't work because medications only try to control the parameters without addressing the root cause and over the years what happens is for the similar effect to be achieved for example a similar blood sugar to be maintained you need 
more and more medications so actually your disease is getting worse what is missed over here is the elephant in the room which is insulin resistance as you see in this picture so it is this insulin resistance which we do not look at when we look at all this diseases one by one which we treat as separate entities so unless you address this elephant in the room unless you address this underlying cause we are never be we will never be able to control or deal with this metabolic diseases which have taken pandemic proportions today so are you insulin resistant we will find that out in the next episode can something be done about it the good news is yes as i told you hyperinsulinemia is driven by the type of food that you eat so it is very much in our hands and we were going to look into how to do it how to go about eating in a manner that hyperinsulinemia can be reversed yes hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance can be reversed and that is how you can deal with metabolic diseases all of that in the next episode so stay tuned the healthy drive wishes you a very good health and a fantastic weekend ahead i'll see you next time tata